Nancy Reagan said her life really began when she met Ronald Reagan in 1951, a relationship that would last more than five decades. As first lady, she was her husband's most trusted advisor and influential force during the Reagan administration, a partnership that took them from Hollywood to the White House. And Mrs. Reagan would be a political force on at least one key issue, even after her husband's death. Above all, theirs was a love story. Ronnie and Nancy, in the final words of his last big speech, he called on her. Before I go, I would like to ask the person who has made my life's journey so meaningful, someone I have been so very proud of over the years, to join me. Nancy. Nancy Davis, a graduate of Smith College and an actress in her own right, on Broadway and in Hollywood, she married Ronald Reagan on March 4, 1952. They made one film together, Hellcats of the Navy, in 1956. I was afraid you wouldn't come. But while that was the end of her acting career, she would take on a new role, her husband's inspiration, protector, guardian, their children, Patty and Ron Jr., and from President Reagan's marriage to Jane Wyman, Michael and Maureen. On their 20th anniversary, he was governor, she first lady of California, and he wrote to her, quote, I can't remember ever being without you. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. She was at his side as he was sworn in as the 40th president in 1981. Nancy Reagan famously brought her style and some Hollywood flair to the White House, those legendary state dinners. President Reagan there, cutting in on a dance with the first lady and Frank Sinatra. They were a team she was fiercely protective, writing to her husband's side when he was shot barely two months into his presidency. Later, writing in his diary about the moment he woke up in the hospital after being shot. I opened my eyes once to find Nancy there. I pray I'll never face a day when she isn't there. Of all the ways God has blessed me, giving her to me is the greatest and beyond anything I can ever hope to deserve. After the shooting, the First Lady sometimes clashing with his top aides, accused of controlling her husband at times. And there was this famous moment when Mrs. Reagan helped the president come up with the words. Doing everything we can. Doing everything we can. Reagan's former chief of staff revealing that she once consulted an astrologer in making his schedule. But Nancy Reagan's signature cause in the White House was fighting teen alcohol and drug abuse, creating the campaign, Just Say No. Just say no. After Ronald Reagan revealed in a public letter that he had Alzheimer's disease in 1994, Nancy Reagan became even more the protector of his life and his legacy, calling it a quote, long goodbye. As each day brings another reminder of this very long goodbye. Giving an emotional know, tribute the at the 1996 Republican convention. So let me close with Ronnie's words, not mine. Never forget your heroic origins, never fail to seek divine guidance, and never, never lose your natural God-given optimism. And when the president died in 2004, Mrs. Reagan meticulously planned his funeral, stoic through it all until this moment. In the years after, she broke with the Republican Party on this issue, championing stem cell research as a way of saving other families the pain of Alzheimer's. She put the Reagan Library at the forefront of politics, hosting a series of presidential debates, greeting up-and-coming members of the party. In her last major interview with Vanity Fair, Nancy Reagan spoke of living without the love of her life. People say it gets better, she said. No, it does not. I miss Ronnie a lot, an awful lot.